Hey everyone, many of you might remember this test that I did a while back to try to build an ad hoc component pickup system for my Charm High pick and place machine. My Charm High has the ability to set custom feeder slots that it understands are not pin pulled feeders, so they're not a rotating feeder. And what you can do with them is say, put a strip of components down and you can tell it that this is feeder number, say 79, and it's gonna have this particular component in it. And its starting pickup position is this point here, its ending position is this point here, and there are X many components along those positions. And it can go when it's doing a run and pick up these components and place them. And it knows where it's up to, and it'll go to the next one, go to the next one. Now, it sounded really good, and there are a lot of people that use a system like this on their pick and place machines, whether they've acrylic cut a system like I've done, or whether they've machine cut a system, but it's got some inherent problems, and I want to explain what they are, and why I stopped using it. Well, I really only tried using it twice, and it failed miserably. So the first one is that once you've put your tape down, I'm using double-sided tape to hold it down, the tape's stuck, which is fine, but it means that it's really hard to replace. And when you finish a strip and you want to replace it, pulling it off will often leave garbage like this that gets ripped off of the back of the paper tape at least. So you end up having to then constantly replace the double-sided tape. It becomes really messy to do. And what's more important with that is... Because when you've placed these parts down and you've exposed a whole bunch of parts that you want fed, the top tape has to be pulled away. And because the top tape is pulled away, all the components are exposed. Let's say you've got one component on here that you use 10 times more per run than a different component. Changing one of these strips becomes quite hard to do without knocking or disturbing all the other components that are on the board, especially during a run. The other problem with this system, and it's the, the biggest problem with this system, is that Although the pick and place machine understands where it's up to when it's doing a run, quite often I've found if I have to stop the run for whatever reason, let's say there's a pickup issue somewhere else, or a vacuum pickup fail where it's detected that it hasn't got the component and so the system stops. Whenever I restart the system, quite often it forgets where it's up to and goes back to the zero mark. And that's a problem if it's already picked, let's say, five components from here, because there is no components in the first five slots. And I can't just tell it to continue from number six, because it just doesn't do it. And so often I'll have a situation where the run gets destroyed because I can't make it continue from where it was up to. A few times I tried actually shuffling ICs back into the first position. It was just a real nightmare. So this overall failed for me as a solution, and I stopped using it. And I've been trying to think up a new way of doing it, and it's taken me quite a while like most of my ideas, they kind of simmer in the back of my mind until I have a bit of an aha moment. And last week I had an aha moment. And so I started tinkering around with this idea. So I started playing around with a whole bunch of different 3D printed, what I call extrusions. They're not really extrusions because they're not being extruded, but they look like something that would be extruded. But they were 3D printed instead because that's the only way I've got to build up something like this. And... I designed two different types of slots. One is a squarish slot and one is a slightly angled slot with a deeper trough to be able to support two different types of tape. I need to be able to support some plastic strip like this, which normally will have an IC in it and it'll be quite thick, and also paper tape. And I needed to get the tolerances right where I could slide the paper tape in and have it slide easy enough that I didn't destroy the tape at all, getting it in and out, or knock any of the components, but also make it tight enough that it didn't shift around when the machine was running. And the same with the plastic one. As you can see, the paper tape is a little bit thicker than the plastic on its edges, but you can actually get paper tape that's thicker because it might have a capacitor inside that might be thicker than a resistor. So there are a lot of different variations of these. So I needed something that would kind of work as a generic way that I could find a slot to fit these into. And so I printed a lot of different versions trying to get the tolerances right on my printer. And we'll talk about this one in a second, because as you can see, this completely under extruded. Yeah. And what I ended up with was this strip over here. And this particular strip has got my tolerances pretty much exactly right, where I can take some tape and I can slide it in. And it sits really nicely inside here. And it's mostly flat enough. There's a little bit of give. Obviously, this tape started off bent. But there's enough clearance for the pickup head to grab the components. There's enough room that I can get some tweezers in to pull the tape out. So I can pull the cover tape back if I need to for however many components I want to expose. And the idea with this is if there's ever a situation where I need to reset the zero point, all I need to do is just feed more tape through. 
and get the zero point back to the start again. So anytime if there's a reset or let's say that the run completed successfully and it used 16 components on here, well I can just go and shift it over to the start point again and then do my next run. I can just keep cutting the end of the tape off over here and this can also support an endless amount of tape, right? It can be a short bit of tape if that's all I've got or I can have that, the tape hanging off the end of the machine. Technically I could even put a reel system together where I could hang a reel off the end. The problem with hanging a reel off the end is the tape on a reel comes this way where this is the starting point. As you can see there's already some cover tape that's off the end here. If I can grab it. So this is the direction that components go into the pick and place machine off the reel normally that if they went off a reel I'd have to put them in upside down. Now upside down is totally fine for a passive but if it's a an IC or an LED or, or something that has a, a specific orientation it needs to match then I'd have to remember to program in the component as a 180 flip when I put it on these particular feeders to make sure that it gets placed the right way around. Small problem to have to deal with to be able to support a system like this. The other version can do the plastic tape and as you can see this just feeds in here if I put it the right way. Right, it has to also go this way and this just slides in really nicely and it doesn't really move around at all and I can do the same thing where I can feed it through the edge as I need to. So this is what I came up with. That's great but what I didn't want to do is have to print a whole sheet of these in one hit and I wanted them kind of modular if I could. So as I was designing the next phase of this that's where this problem came in. I'll just quickly go through this. This piece here is completely under extruded and that is because I got a bad batch of black PLA uh, a new PLA that I never used before and it wasn't extruding properly and then all of a sudden it completely clogged up in my printer and I had to disassemble the entire hot end of my printer to get the PTFE tube out and get the, the filament that was completely melted and blocked up inside it. There was like a little bubble of it and it just couldn't be pulled through. And in the process of doing that and putting my printer back together again, I've somehow managed to not get the heat block uh, connections internally tight enough and I'm now getting leakage on my printer. So yes, I have a dead printer right now, but while I was trying to get it working and suffering through the leakage, which was really messy, uh, for those of you on Twitter might have seen my post on Twitter about the, the mess all over my hot end, I and I was out of black PLA, I started working on making all the pieces in orange, which is not what I want for my machine because I want them in black to not interfere with the vision on the camera and obviously orange is quite bright. But anyway, I printed a whole bunch of stuff in orange and not everything I need. I wanted six of these, but I ran out of the ability to print. As you can see, there was lots of garbage coming through my printer. But what I designed was these pieces with rail holes on the bottom. So that's the top that the components feed through and that is the bottom. And then I've got these pieces here that screw onto the base of my pick and place machine and these slide or snap in to those slots. Just like this. So technically I can design different shapes of these for different types of tape if I need. And then I can just feed in all my tape from the side and set up my pick and place points over here. And it doesn't have to be super big. Right? I've got six slots, two in each. So that allows me to put 12 components on one of these. So I've yet to actually assemble this. This is as far as I managed to print before my printer completely packed it in. But let's go assemble this on the pick and place machine now and I'll show you how it all comes together. So as you can see there are a lot of tapped M5 positions on the base here that I could use and my original idea was to be able to place one here and one over here and do really long feeders that go across here so I could put a whole bunch of components on. But the truth is I don't need to do that because I can make my tape length as long as I want and it can hang off the edge. So my plan now is to put one here and one over here and just have these feeders sitting approximately there. So I'm going to screw these down with some M5 bolts that I got. And I printed these tall enough that they sit just above these slide rails. Those rails don't actually get moved at all because all of the boards I build are quite small. They fit down here. And I've got quite a, a lot of room here. If I needed to put a bigger board in, I could. So these will obviously be in black once my printer's back up and running. 
Now, I already know that my pickup height is fine because my acrylic sheet that I used to use would sit above this metal and I had enough clearance for that. So I can now just click these in place. And now I'm just able to feed tape in to all of these positions. Some 0603s. Here are some 0402s. And as you can see, they fit quite nicely. So my plan for the final revision of this system is to have a marker on the end of each of these extrusions to show where the initial pickup place will be for the head. So when I feed more tape through, I can line that position up properly and potentially have a way to actually align the ends of them. Technically, I could just align these to the end of the holding piece, because they're not weight-bearing at all. So I could do something like this to line them up. I'm just worried that I might knock them on this end and push them out as I'm feeding them. But I can make these longer or shorter as I need. It's the same extrusion that goes the whole way. So I'm looking forward to getting my printer fixed and getting my black PLA up and running again and printing out a whole bunch of these and then experimenting with different types of extrusion for different types of tape, maybe some 12mm tape or 16mm. There's no reason why I couldn't do an extrusion that fits across two slots. Sure, I'll be wasting some space, but it's not like I need to have it always loaded and have those positions always gone. So yeah, this is my idea. This is what I came up with. I'm thinking that this is actually going to work really well. The fact that I can just keep feeding tape through as I need to, realigning the head and continue on the run is pretty good, I think. All I need to work out now is how I'm going to hold the pull tape down. So if I need to expose 20 components, I need to pull the tape off those 20 components. I might have some type of hangover clamp or something that I can feed the tape into. So until this goes into production, I won't really know. I guess we'll stay tuned and see this running in a future video. But I just wanted to share this. I'm quite excited about it. I will have the final design of this available on Thingiverse for people to download and use if they want. Okay, thank you for watching. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Please subscribe and click the alarm bell to be notified when I have new videos coming out. If you're not new here, welcome back. To my patrons, thank you so much. If you want to back me on Patreon, please check the link in the video right now or the link in the description below. If you're not a fan of Patreon, that's okay. There are other ways to support me, like buying my products on Tindy or buying any of my Tiny Pico gear from tinypico.com. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Bye.